We're counting down the top 20 stories from the 2018 calendar year. And at number 20, one of the first stories from the 2018 calendar in January. Divisional round of the playoffs. The Vikings hosting the Saints. The Vikings up 17-0 in the third quarter. They blow the lead. But when the Saints pull ahead, they pull ahead a little bit too early because the Vikings had just enough time to drive down the field and author one of the all-time great plays in NFL history. It will be known as the Minneapolis Miracle, the touchdown pass from Case Keenum to Stephon Diggs. The Saints were not in a very good defense, and defensive back Marcus Williams made a not very good effort to tackle Stephon Diggs, who ran into the end zone, pulled off his helmet, and threw it. And it sparked pandemonium in Minnesota. And also, it created a very real sense that the Vikings could win the Super Bowl for the first time in franchise history, become the first team that is hosting the Super Bowl to play in it. but. It all fell apart exactly a week later when the Vikings went to Philadelphia and were blown off the field by the Eagles. We made an announcement that Josh was going to be our head football coach. I got a call Tuesday evening saying he had decided to, he had changed his mind and was going in a different direction. We see this from time to time in the hiring cycle in January. There's one team that has yet to hire a coach, and that team doesn't because that team is waiting for one of the assistant coaches who will be working in the Super Bowl. And this past year, everyone knew that Josh McDaniels was earmarked to become the new coach of the Indianapolis Colts, and everyone expected it to happen. Not long before the Super Bowl, though, there was a thought that maybe Josh McDaniels was having second thoughts about taking that job. And two days after the Patriots lost to the Eagles, the Colts lost McDaniels. He decided to stay with the Patriots, and the Colts ultimately relieved because they wanted someone who was all in, and Frank Reich tumbled into their lap after helping the Eagles win the Super Bowl. He wasn't a serious candidate before McDaniels bailed. Reich became the guy who may very well be the right man for the Colts for 2018 and many years to come. One of the biggest surprises of the 2017 season in a good way became one of the biggest surprises of the 2018 season in a bad way. The Jaguars, within a whisker of the Super Bowl, end up imploding in 2018. Early on, it looked like that wasn't going to happen. They were 2-0. They beat the Patriots. But it all started to fall apart. We saw the warning signs late in the offseason when Jalen Ramsey was quoted in a couple of print interviews saying some fairly inflammatory things that made us wonder, where is the discipline for this Jaguars team that was founded on that concept last year? And as the season unfolded, we saw more and more examples of a lack of discipline that created a problem that resulted in the Jaguars plunging to the basement of the AFC South and leaving everyone to wonder which Jaguars team is the real Jaguars team Maybe we'll find out in 2019. After several years of the quarterback market stagnating at the top, in the past couple of years, more and more quarterbacks have become the highest paid player in NFL history, and one continues to jump the other, and it culminated in Aaron Rodgers getting to a whopping $33.5 million per year not long before the start of the 2018 season. And then the 2018 season began. Rodgers was injured. The Packers looked good at times, but struggled more often than not. And even when he became healthy, he wasn't the same guy we're used to seeing. And that's the big question heading into 2019. The highest paid player in NFL history are his best days in the rearview mirror. And are we seeing the beginning of the decline for one of the best quarterbacks of all time? Um, I mean, anytime you lose your starting quarterback, I mean, that's um, you know, everyone. It is a big deal. And so obviously, um, feel for him personally. Um, I know how disappointed he is. I haven't got a chance to see him yet, um, but I feel for him. The 49ers traded in 2017 for quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo. After the season ended, they made him the highest paid quarterback in NFL history at the time. Three or four others have passed him since then. But there was plenty of hope for a great 2018 for the 49ers and for Garoppolo. And in the third game of the season, while trying to make a cut at the sideline so he could deliver a blow to a defender who was pursuing him, he tore his ACL and was lost for the year, throwing the 49ers into another season of disarray. There's plenty of hope for 2019, but the question for Jimmy Garoppolo will always be, can he stay healthy? So far, when he's had chances to play, he hasn't been able to, as demonstrated most noticeably by the fact that almost all of his 2018 season was lost. 
After a couple of years of the ratings for televised NFL games dropping dramatically, they rebounded in 2018, and there's a good reason for it. It turns out that people like to watch good games, and they don't like to watch bad games, and they like to watch high-scoring games, and they don't like to watch low-scoring games. And the NFL has noticed that, and the NFL has reveled in the fact that scoring has been up throughout the 2018 season. And really, as the NFL plans for 2019 and beyond with new TV contracts looming, look for the NFL to subtly or not so subtly find ways to encourage more scoring and to schedule more good games for primetime windows so more people will watch those games and drive up the perceived value of the NFL in the overall national landscape where there are so many things out there that can attract our attention and consume our time. It's harder than ever for the NFL to stand out, but they've realized good games, high scoring, that's what will do it. I don't know how you heard that, but I mean, I'm definitely going to look at my future for sure. I'm going to sit down the next couple of weeks and uh, see where I'm at. Rob, what would make you retire? Uh, I'm, I'm not ready for that, these type of questions right now. There was a thought prior to the Super Bowl that Patriots tight end Rob Gronkowski would retire after the game. And if the Patriots had beaten the Eagles, maybe he would have. Instead, he took several weeks to make a decision about what he was going to do for 2018. He ultimately decided to play for the Patriots after the Patriots explored trading him. And he went on to have a 2018 season that was far from the standards he has set as recently as 2017. So what's next for Rob Gronkowski? He very well may retire in 2019. Even if he does play, he's fallen very far from the guy who used to be so dominant. It would dictate what a defense was doing from a game planning standpoint. Now he's just a guy you cover one on one like any other tight end in the NFL. And he's performing like any other tight end in the NFL, which is a far cry from what we're used to from Rob Gronkowski. The 2018 draft saw five quarterbacks come off the board in the first round, and they all eventually became starting quarterbacks in their cities. The last one to be the full-time starter, Lamar Jackson, pushing Joe Flacco, as a practical matter, out of Baltimore. But all the other guys entrusted with that opportunity to be the short-term answer and the long-term franchise quarterback. Baker Mayfield looks to be the best of the bunch so far, but all will have long careers, all have their own unique skills, and all will be forming part of the family fabric of the NFL for seasons to come. Uh, I don't think it could have happened in any better fashion than it did. And um, to have then that moment with my teammates on the field, the offensive line, um, I, I mean, it just it played out even greater than I ever could have imagined. As Drew Brees closes in on his 40th birthday, he had one of his best seasons ever in 2018. And it wasn't just because he set the all-time career passing yardage mark. It's because he played as well as he ever has. You know, we focus so much on looking for signs of slippage in Tom Brady. Here's Drew Brees, who isn't that much younger than Brady, still looking like the guy he's always been and being a viable candidate for his first ever league MVP award. It raises a real question as to how long Breeze will play. He suggested he's not gonna play until 45, but between him and Tom Brady, you could make the argument that Breeze is the guy who is better suited to extending his career halfway into his fifth decade. The NFL wanted us all to focus exclusively on football in 2018, but there will still be from time to time off-field issues. Sometimes multiple issues bubble up in a fairly short time period, like we saw with Reuben Foster and Kareem Hunt. The lingering challenge for the NFL is to come up with investigative procedures that are effective and that persuade the public that the NFL knows what it's doing when the time comes to figure out what players have been doing when they're not at work. Now, when it comes to video, the NFL continues to fail in a competition with TMZ to get videos that the league knows are available. And the league has made it clear that it won't be paying for video. So moving forward, look for TMZ to continue to get the videos that the NFL doesn't. And when it comes to actually confronting players with allegations of wrongdoing, the failure to interview Kareem Hunt for months is something that the NFL was criticized for. And moving forward, it will be important for the NFL to look at its procedures and see how it can improve in order to have more effective and fair investigations of players accused of off-field misconduct. 
I mean, it was uh, one of the most, you know, competitive games I've been a part of since I've been coaching in this league. I thought it was really just a, a competitive game with a lot of high caliber football in all three phases. The number 10 story for 2018 goes 10 times 10 plus 5. The 54-51 game from Monday Night Football, the game that was supposed to be played in Mexico City, ended up in L.A. and ended up over-delivering on the very high expectations that we all had. We pegged it as Game of the Year material in September. By the time the kickoff rolled around and by the time that game ended, it was every bit as compelling and fascinating and as exciting as we thought it would be. It caused some to think that defensive football would die, but defensive football is still thriving, and every once in a while you get two great offenses together and you get an outcome like the one that we saw between the Rams and the Chiefs, and we may not see another one like that anytime soon. So what do you do when you're the Minnesota Vikings? You get within a game of the Super Bowl. You've got three quarterbacks under contract, and they're all becoming free agents. You bring back none of them, and you make Kirk Cousins, at the time, the highest-paid player in NFL history at $28 million a year on a three-year fully guaranteed contract. It created plenty of expectations in Minnesota, and I don't think the Vikings did enough to reel those expectations in because the schedule's tougher, the team is more of a target, they get their best from everyone they see, and what we've seen is a Vikings franchise that has grossly underachieved in 2018 relative to that very special season they had in 2017. And now moving forward, the question becomes, can they get more out of Kirk Cousins in the two years that they are financially tied to him? Going into the 2018 season, nobody really knew what to make of the Chicago Bears. New head coach in Matt Nagy, new approach offensively, a quarterback in Mitchell Trubisky who was entering his second season. But then came the stunning decision to make a trade for pass rusher Khalil Mack. And even though they gave up a lot to get him and they're paying him even more than what Aaron Donald makes in L.A., Khalil Mack changed everything about that Bears team, changed the vibe, changed the expectation, and thrust the Bears into a position we didn't think they would occupy for at least another couple of years. True and legitimate playoff contender and possibly Super Bowl contender and possibly a Super Bowl contender for years to come. Frustrated, mad, don't like to lose like that, but this team will stick together and they'll keep fighting. we got a big game next week. As 2018 began, the Cleveland Browns inexplicably decided to keep a head coach who had won one out of 32 games. Hugh Jackson was going to get one more opportunity to turn things around, and that opportunity ultimately would not last long. It became abundantly clear early in the 2018 season that there was too much dysfunction in the organization between Hugh Jackson and the offensive coordinator in Todd Haley that some believe the Browns required Jackson to hire. They butted heads from the first episode of Hard Knocks onward, and it ultimately came to a climax in late October, and Hugh Jackson is out. And what happened after that? The Browns began to play a lot better. And in the first five games without Hugh Jackson, they won as many games as they won in the 40 games with him. And the end result is the future is bright for the Cleveland Browns. They've got a great young quarterback in Baker Mayfield. The coach they hire in 2019 will go a long way toward determining how quickly this team becomes a true contender. But take heart, Browns fans. You've waited a long time. You're very soon going to have a team that you can believe in. Uh, we didn't look back. I can't tell you what a celebration I had internally in uh, my mind when uh, we got it done. Uh, we needed him. Uh, we sure needed a receiver of his stature. The Dallas Cowboys spent a lot of time in 2018 defending their decision to not have a number one receiver. And then they got desperate and decided they better go find a number one receiver. Well, there aren't many number one receivers available. They traded for Amari Cooper, who hadn't been playing like a number one receiver for the Oakland Raiders. And at first with the Cowboys, it didn't look like it was going to be a great marriage. But then it exploded, and Amari Cooper became one of the best receivers in the NFL, vindicating the trade and also setting himself up for a major payday from the Cowboys in 2019. And what it did is it helped spark this team to win after win after win, thrusting them into the playoff conversation, saving the job most likely of head coach Jason Garrett, and giving the Cowboys a receiver to complement a great young quarterback in Dak Prescott and a great young running back in Ezekiel Elliott. As the 2017 season was coming to a conclusion, it seemed more and more inevitable that John Gruden would be returning 
to the sideline from the broadcast booth. And it looked like the Buccaneers were the team that was going to hire John Gruden after they put him in the Ring of Honor, and that sparked his desire to come back and coach. Enter Mark Davis in the Oakland Raiders with that reported 10-year, $100 million contract. It's not, it's not really that, but it's close enough to get Gruden to go to Oakland and created a ton of expectations as to what he would do there. His introductory press conference was inspiring. It was riveting, and it created expectations they would figure things out. And they haven't. Sparked by a very difficult negotiation with Khalil Mack that ultimately forced the Raiders to trade him. The season disintegrated quickly for John Gruden, and now they're rebuilding. At a time when they had a playoff caliber roster under GM Reggie McKenzie, they're picking up the pieces, looking for a new GM, and figuring out where they go from here. I've never been in this spot, and I'm not going to act like I, I know what the hell I'm going to do tomorrow when they, when they get in here. So. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna do what we always do. We're gonna represent the Packers the right way. I, I know that. So, other than that, we'll, we'll focus on what's in front of us. In 99 prior seasons of football, the Green Bay Packers had never fired a coach during the season. They had one coach leave voluntarily in the middle of a campaign. This year, season 100 became the first time the Packers fired a guy with games left. Mike McCarthy gone after a lackluster home performance against the Cardinals. It stunned the National Football League and it sparked a debate over whether or not McCarthy had done enough in his time with the team to deserve to have the right to finish the season. The Packers thought, hey, we know what we're going to do when the season ends. We may as well go ahead and do it. It gives us a chance to start looking for a new coach. It gives McCarthy a chance to figure out what he's going to do next. But others believe that he should have had the chance to finish the year on his own terms. Either way, the Packers decided they were finished with Mike McCarthy. And one of the big questions for 2019 will be, who do the Packers find to take his place? I have no reaction. Um, I've told you guys, and I've told you guys consistently, a reaction comes from me if and when he walks in the door. Until that happens, um, I'm business as usual, focus on those that are here and working inappropriately so that way I don't waste my time and theirs. It's not very often that a player in his prime will sit out all of an NFL season, especially when that player is Le'Veon Bell and he's got $14.5 million he's walking away from. But that's what Bell did in a week-by-week -week drama that played out throughout the course of the season. Would he show up? Will he not show up? And eventually he didn't show up by the deadline that came the Tuesday after week 10. The Steelers had to go with James Conner. Le'Veon Bell takes the year off. And now the question becomes, when he hits the open market in 2019 and hit the open market he most likely will what kind of money will he make and will it offset the 14 and a half million that he sacrificed by not playing football for the Steelers or anyone else in 2018 it's a golden age for quarterbacks in the National Football League and in 2018 we saw a great collection of guys on the wrong side of 35 plus a new set of star quarterbacks on the right side of 25 and the best of the bunch Patrick Mahomes. This is a guy who is doing things we have never seen from an NFL quarterback with no look passes, sidearm throws because of his baseball and basketball experiences. He doesn't need to have that that base, that mechanics that we hear about all the time when it comes to quarterback play. He can make any throw from any angle. He's going to inspire a generation of kids who will play quarterback like him. And he's going to be around for a generation. Legitimate MVP candidate and a guy who is going to be one of the best quarterbacks that we see in the National Football League for however long he can play, and it could be for a very long time. And the top story for 2018, the Philadelphia Eagles win their first Super Bowl ever, their first championship since 1960 with a couple of home wins in the playoffs where they were the underdogs and they broke out the underdog masks with Nick Foles at quarterback instead of Carson Wentz. And then they go to the Super Bowl and with Malcolm Butler inexplicably standing on the sidelines for nearly all of the game for the New England Patriots made mincemeat of the New England defense and outscored Tom Brady and company vaulting Foles and Doug Peterson to the championship and sparking a year-long celebration in Philadelphia, which unfortunately has not translated into a stellar 2018 season. But it doesn't matter. You finally got your Super Bowl trophy. Live it up, Philadelphia. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.